we are moving away now uh, from having looked at panels. Well, uh, Don Williams took us out in an avenue uh, that we are going to pursue further now because in, within the panel paintings initiative, it's been paramount for us to engage also related disciplines like furniture conservators and musical instrument conservators. So we are embarking on the first talk here, which is called Panels in Furniture, Observation and Conservation Issues by Paul van Dijn from the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. He is a furniture conservator. Please, Paul. Here you go. Thank you very much, Jörn, and good afternoon, everybody. It's a long day. I hope you have some energy left for the last two lectures. And perhaps that's, it's, a good, it's good that they're not about panel paintings. A slight diversion might, uh, might help. Um, I will discuss uh, some 16th and 17th century Dutch cabinets with you. Um, and uh, we've seen a lot of objects today which... Um, do not have their original construction anymore. Um, and when I went to the first meeting of the, my first meeting of the Panel Paintings Initiative in Florence, uh, I came across um, a huge altarpiece in the Opificio, which still had its original construction, and I was very impressed how well it survived. And um, I've been looking at some, some furniture to sort of try to find parallels to, to um, that altarpiece. Um, <clears throat> to start off and to break the ice a little bit, I will um, also show some domestic slides like uh, Donald did earlier this afternoon. This is my house um, and the um, window frame with the French door to see leading to the conservatory um, actually belonged to one of my neighbors. In my house, this frame had been removed by a previous owner, and um, when my neighbor um, uh, moved into his house, uh, he still had this, and uh, he wanted to extend his room. He, he found these original elements not very interesting, and um, he said to me, well, if you, if you take it out, you can have it for free. And, um, and he, th he thought he did very well, and I thought I did very well. Um, and then I kept it in my cellar for uh, quite a number of years in the basement, and um, a year, just over a year ago, I built it in, and uh, it was, um, by a decorator, it was stripped because the paint was flaking, it was quite in poor condition, and, and redecorated. Um, and then some problems occurred. Um, let's see. As you can see here, this is this is a, a panel from that from my neighbour, which came from my neighbour, and this is the panel next to it, which is mounted against the wall and which has always been there. And um, what happened was that the, uh, the the wood which had been kept in my cellar had uh, was obviously slightly more uh, had a slight high the humidity. And uh, a crack occurred, which you can see here. And here in more detail. It's, it's about one millimeter, and it's a bit annoying, of course, but um, then on elsewhere in my house you see the same sort of cracks because wood obviously moves. Uh, the panel, um, the grain direction of the panel is vertical, and uh, the... Um, stretcher of the frame above it has also had some shrinkage, so you can see this mitre which has opened up a little bit, and uh, the join as well. And the panel which has always been there, the, the paint is still intact. Um, now this phenomena that, that wood shrinks in its width and uh, thickness, but not in the length, is uh, of course always a big problem, and you think that uh, actually um, you should never really uh, glue it together or nail it together, and in this case the frame is, is set in a groove so it can easily move, so although the paint is damaged, the wood itself is still intact. Now, this is uh, a piece from the museum. It comes from uh, the dome in, in Utrecht. Um, 
dates from around 1500, and uh, it's a huge piece, three meters 50 wide. The doors are um, about 80 centimeters wide. and uh, consists of three boards, thick boards of two and a half centimeters, uh, on which at the front uh, a frame is nailed onto. You see it in more detail, the front and the back of that door. Um, there are cracks running from top to bottom. The butt joints of the, between the planks have opened up. Um, I didn't really investigate it very much. I don't know whether the wood was uh, glued together or not, um, but uh, the, the cracks are about two millimeters, two, two and a half millimeters wide, so in, in, in effect the shrinkage is relatively small. At the interior in the past, uh, plywood strips were attached, I suppose, to keep the dust out. Um, it's a conservation treatment which we would not really consider nowadays, but as they are there, we will leave them. You see the damage in more detail. Now, the wood used for this cabinet and also for the other cabinets I'm going to show you is uh, wonderful, wonderfully quartered oak, perfectly cut radial or perhaps um, uh, split from the uh, trunk. Um, and um, it is kept very well. It's nailed. The, um, the frame on the outside is, is not, doesn't have joints in itself. It's just nailed onto these wooden boards, and the nails protrude, and you see them on the inside. And where the, this bolt is fitted, the fittings come through, and you see them over there. So it's, in a way, it's slightly crudely done, but the structure has been kept very well. If we move on another 100 years, um, there's this cabinet where I will discuss the two, sorry, the two doors, this door and that door. They're about 45 centimeters square. And uh, they also have slight damage here. There's one crack, and that's about all the damage there is. If you look on the inside, you see that the construction is uh, similar to the previous cabinet. Uh, again, very nice oak was used, and uh, the two boards also have a, a split. Um, here, the, uh, the frame on the outside is uh, glued onto the boot. There are no nails used. And um, most of the Moldings are also cross grain here, there, there, there. So about half of the two boards is covered with cr cross grain uh, moldings. Uh, you can see it in more detail. The, the mitres are still very well closed. This one's slightly open, but this one's very closed. And, here, because of the movement of the boards, there's a crack here, and the mites have slightly opened. But you would expect a much, much more shrinkage, actually. This is the other door. And there, there's no crack visible. This section has moved up a little bit, so the, this mite has opened up, as you can see over there. And there's also a slight gap here where, because this piece has shrunk. This cabinet's actually dated, so we know exactly how old it is. It's from 1607, again of oak. And here, although on the outside um, it looks as if the construction is similar to the doors I just discussed, um, here, there are actually panels set into a frame. So this is the door frame, and then there's a panel here and a panel there, and then moldings are applied on top. The panel is uh, one centimeter thick, and the moldings 
are also at a maximum of one centimeter thickness. So it's, it's all quite thin, and the frame is three and a half centimeters uh, thick. And there's hardly any damage at all. <coughs> Here you see that the, the boards, the two boards of the panel are, are, uh, have a, um, a tongue and groove joint, which shows here on the X-ray. The mitres are all very nicely closed, so this seems as if there's hardly been any shrinkage at all. The only crack I could find is this one. And here it seems like a crack, but it's actually the tongue and groove joint which has become visible because the edges of the panel are beveled. Now this cabinet looks on the outside quite well, but it has undergone quite extensive um, conservation in the past before we acquired it. As you can see here, it's, um, it's again, uh, in this case, one panel, but set in a frame. And um, towards the top, the frame is actually thinner, and um, there has been damage to the um, mortise and tenons, uh, probably because uh, the doors have fallen. I can't really explain it in any other way. And then... Um, also, these stretches have been added in the past, glued across the grain of the panels, and there was a split there, which was also glued not particularly nicely, but on the outside it doesn't show that much, so it's something that we will leave. Here, this join of the frame has probably been broken, and they've added a, a piece of wood to see here in more detail. And the uh, pivot hinge on top is set in a, a new piece of wood, so there must have been quite extensive damage. Here the wall of the mortise was broken away, and it's just so you see a crack there. <coughs> and uh, also the, the interior of the door was probably covered with cloth because there were nails all around it, also in this, newly, in this new piece of wood. But because the doors are quite stable, we will, we will not treat them. This is the other door in quite a similar condition, actually slightly better condition. Here again, this damage of the mortise and a crack here. But it's, we, don't, we don't find that uh, disturbing, so we will just leave it. Now the next cabinet is, uh, looks more like a, a painting than, than the cabinets you've seen uh, until now. Um, but it's not paint, it's, uh, it's marquetry. Um, the cabinet's dated from the end of the 17th century and had extensive cracks, as you can see here, and also there. And um, the doors are hollow, which you could easily find out by knocking on them, and um, the cracks were running from the top to bottom, and looking at the bottom of the door, you could see that the doors were actually constructed as a sandwich. So there are three boards glued together, which form the front, and also three boards at the back, and in between there um, is a, a frame. And, um, and then there also, you could hear that there were stretches running across as well and at the sunflower they actually used some nails to glue these boards onto the stretches. Now the boards had come loose from the stretches so that's why they used these nails. Um, we found these cracks very disturbing um, that had been filled in the past but there was uh, also a risk that some of the protruding marquetry which went along the cracks would break and be lost. So we decided to, um, to see if we could treat this cabinet and, and preferably close the cracks.
here is the left door and there's a crack, one crack running from top to bottom. The other crack sort of stops here and we think it's because this veneer was actually applied across the grain of the boards. So just like the previous cabinets, these, um, if, you, if you glue um, wood or veneer across the grain, it actually um, prevents the uh, wood from shrinking. And I'm sure that there's tension, but apparently these stretches or the veneer can sort of um, uh, absorb the tension. And the same happened with the other door. There's a crack running all the way, and the other crack sort of stops halfway. And also the interior of the door has large cracks. Now we took some x-rays because we wanted to find out how the doors were assembled and whether it was actually possible to dismantle the door to close the cracks. And um, on the x-ray on the left, you can see that uh, there are no joints in the, in the frame. And then the stretches are slightly shorter than the frame and uh, the stop here. And then it's the stretches and the frame are nailed on. And then in between there are glue blocks um, glued in the same direction as the grain where the, <coughs> in the places where there are um, the butt joints and across the grain in the middle of the boards. We didn't know whether these uh, nails were uh, inserted from the front or the back because in both cases they were covered by uh, veneer. And um, my colleague Iskander Brebaert, who you see on the right, um, devised a very simple mechanism to find out um, if the nails were actually inserted from the front or the back. It's, it's a little magnet um, on, on a bit of tape and you move it in front of the uh, boot and if there's, iron, if there's iron there it will move. And in that way we found out that, um, that the nails were inserted from the back and we decided to um, remove the boards from the front. Here's the drawing which Iskander made of the construction of the doors. He, you see there's the two boards and then these, this frame in between and then on the side of the door there was a, a strip of um, rosewood veneer which we had to take off in order to lift the boards. I won't discuss it in too much detail, but uh, I'll just run quickly through. Here you see the nails and then all the other components. We started with taking out all the filling material uh, and we could also, some of the marquetry which was loose, we, we took out and, uh, and put on a drawing we had made of the marquetry. And you can see that the cracks are about two millimeters wide. Here, one of the boards of the door is taken off and turned around and put on the, on the door so you can see the construction. The, everything is, of course, done with animal glue. And in some areas there was uh, PVA glue and also a darker glue from previous restorations. And Interestingly enough, there was a repair there and also there. And also in the back of the cabinet, there was a hole. And um, a military expert who happened to visit us said, well, there must have been a piece of shrapnel which went right through the door and through the back of the cabinet, because otherwise you could never explain such damage. Here, the uh, boards from the front have been removed, and you look at the frame and the interior of the back of the doors. The glue blocks have also been removed. And we then had to decide um, if we would go any further and also close the cracks in the back of the door or um, leave them as they are. And we decided that we would really be good to, um, to close those cracks as well. Also because by closing the boards of the front of the doors, the doors would actually become slightly smaller and um, 
and if we if this would be the same size, then we would have to find a way of, of sort of adding wood, which we didn't really want to do because we wanted to keep the original structure and appearance as as well as possible. Because of all the nails, we uh, we heated these nails so they would slightly expand and then shrink again, and in that way, there was. They, it, they were easier to, uh, it was easier to take the boards off and most of the nails actually stayed into the boards and went out of the stretches. And the middle board we just left as it was. And on the right the back boards have been re-glued. Um, and because, as I just said, the, um, because the shrinkage, the boards, when they were re-glued, they were slightly smaller we had to adjust the mitres a little bit, so we, on either side we took off about one and a half millimeter of wood. All the nails were preserved, and um, some of the holes had to be slightly elongated, uh, also because of the shrinkage of the boards. And this is a, a slide of uh, the gluing of... Uh, one of the boards against the other two boards of the front of the door, and uh, at the same time we re-glued all the loose bits of, uh, of marquetry so that um, we didn't have to do that afterwards and uh, we could make sure that it was all plain. We used such cramps to close the joints as well as possible. And here you see the interior of the front. We re-glued all the glue blocks, and the uh, panel was slightly warped, but uh, as, as it is about eight millimeters thick, we, um, it was quite flexible, and we could re-glue it onto the back of the door. We heated it uh, first with a light, and then we used uh, animal glue because it's something we prefer to um, glue the door back together. So here's the mitre which was adjusted and the actual, the, the pivot hinge is still in the same place because we didn't take that out of the bottom of the um, frame and the side of the door is slightly moved inwards, less than you can see there, it's just about two millimeters. Here the door is finished. Here you can see an enormous improvement in the appearance. <coughs> now this is the, the altarpiece which inspired me and um, which was really one of the highlights of, of I found of the visit to uh, of the meeting of the Panel Paintings Initiative. It's from 1433. It's uh, one meter 77 wide. The uh, cross stretches are glued and nailed onto the boards. The boards are about 30 centimeters wide, and um, all the wood is three centimeters uh, thick. And they are glued and nailed against each other. And all the damage there is is just a slight crack here and a crack there, and I find it incredible that there is not more shrinkage. The construction is actually very much like the door of the cabinet I started with. You, well, you can see the similarities for yourself. The only difference is, of course, that here the nails are used as a decorative element, whereas in the altarpiece they uh, are inserted from the back and, and not seen at the front. Here's the, uh, the meeting of the Panel Paintings Initiative looking at these enormous x-rays and um, George explaining us about construction and also at that time telling me that most of the panel paintings he comes across in the United States have been thinned down and, and how extraordinary it is that, that such a piece has kept so well in its original condition.
and here you see an x-ray with all the nails, the hinges. The front, of course, and here in more detail. This picture of the back is actually a mirror image, so you can compare the cracks at the back at the front. And the crack, this crack sort of stops there, and I think because here this whole section is covered with cross grain wood, um, the, um, the, wood the, elasti the wood must have been elastic enough to sort of compensate the uh, shrinkage tension. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Cabinet are not being cradled, we see. Uh, and so aren't violins, I believe.